We are still on a series called AKA God, which is a also known as, that's what the AK stands for. And uh, we're looking at some different names that God has, and then the names, it really has descriptions of, of his characteristics and his attributes and, uh, and, and, and what is really to know God better. And I think that's what a lot of our problems in his life is that we don't turn to God. We'd rather turn to our friends or our husbands or our wives than turn to God because they're flesh and they're there, you know. And I think relationship to be better between us and God has to know the person or know him better. I mean, he knows all about us because he created us. You know, his word says he knows how many hairs we have on our head. You know, like Jesse, she's got a lot. It's also flinging all over the place today. <laughs> Love it. Looks nice. Yeah. So uh, we, we've looked at some names the last couple of weeks. And uh, uh, today we're going to look at a name. It is called Jehovah Nisi. Now, some of you are probably looking at it like, Nisi? What in the world is that? Well, you know, it's kind of like those, you know, those new cars that you're going to get on site. But come on down. We got 2.9% financing on our Jehovah Nisi. No, that's not really what it is all about. <laughs> Jehovah Nisi is the Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. And we're going to look at um, the scripture to start us off with in uh, Exodus chapter 17, verse 15. Exodus chapter 17, verse 15. And Moses built an altar there and called it Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Now, that, I think what we're really kind of uh, looking at this, why did Moses, Moses call the altar Jehovah Nisi? And we're going to get into really what happened in Moses' life. I think it's going to really reflect a lot about even our own lives, that things happen in our lives. And what is the, the happening, what it really is all this happening for? It's to drive us to God. It's to push us that direction. So whatever is, uh, is going on in your life and, and is happening in your life, we're going to really kind of look at um, what is really the focus of your life. What it always, every time you turn to something, what is it? Is it the person? Is it a, a, a job? Is it a car? And, and we're going to find out that that's really what a banner is. It's a something that we always turn to. Um, Paul, he puts it like this in uh, Romans 7, verse 15. Romans 7, verse 15. It says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. When you take your time and really listen to that, at first when you, the words rattle off, when somebody reads it really fast, you're like, what did he say? Do, 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 do what? You know, I think it's like kind of maybe help us understand a little bit better. It's like, the things happen in our lives, it's like, you know, I'm on a diet, and I happen to be downtown Salisbury, you know, and I'm driving by the Krispy Kreme place, and the light is on, hot, fresh donuts. Well, you know, I should not be eating them because I'm on a diet, I'm trying to watch my weight, but I end up turning around, pulling in the parking lot, getting out, and I do what I know I should not be doing. Eating a nice, hot, fresh donut, which tastes so delicious, melting in your mouth. Stop it. <laughs> you know, but there's so much more in our lives that we find ourselves doing. We know better. We should not be doing it. We know better. And we continually do those things. If Paul's admitting it, and he was the world's, he was considered the greatest speaker and, and pusher of God's word. Really, the word of God has reached us because of him going outside of, of Jerusalem and outside of Israel and going out into the other countries. It's because he was went there and he passed the word on about Jesus Christ. If he's admitting he's got a problem, then how much more that we should just stand beside him and say, you know what, I think I got a problem. I keep doing things I should not be doing, and um, I know it's against God. And now, how do we do it? How do we deal with it? Well, it's dealing with it in first and knowing about God, how much He cares about you. 
And so in this, we're going to really, we're going to go through a story about a guy named Moses. And in this story, we're going to find out how much God cares about him and his people, that he cares also the same about us. And that when we look at God now and we go to pray, we're going to really look at saying our words as in Heavenly Father, Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you are my banner. Hopefully you will kind of start noting that down that in your prayers that you will consider him as your banner when we get done with this message. Through this story, it might make more sense to be able to say that about your God. So this guy, his name is Moses, and he's just a shepherd guy. Well, before he was a shepherd guy, he was, he was really a, a guy that was being grown up into the Egyptian culture uh, because he was, his mama put him in a, a, a basket because of all the two-year-olds were, and under were being killed because of, of something the Jewish population was growing so much. And Pharaoh was kind of scared that they might overrun him and his, his kingdom. And so he started killing babies. And so the mom kind of hid the baby. And next thing you know, the baby's found by Pharaoh's daughter, you know, and stuff. And, and they, he, he raises up in that. And then he, he kind of makes some mistakes and he kills a, a guy and he takes off running. Well, life is good after he gets away from all of that mess. And he hooks up with a bunch of people and he becomes a shepherd. And so he's just out there just minding his business. And, he, you know, he's just watching his sheep, you know, and he's standing there with his staff. And he's going, you know, and the sheep come up to him going, bad. He's going, bad back to him, you know. And, you know, life is good. Kind of like those kind of jobs when you're just sitting there at the computer and the computer goes beep and you're going beep back to it, you know. It's all fine. Until the day comes, God shows up in your life and says, hey, I'm talking to you. How does God talk to you and shows up in your life? Especially when you don't go to church. And you get to pick and choose if you want to watch a person, a, a preacher online. Or you don't kind of talk about God to any of your friends. You definitely don't listen to no music that is, has anything spiritual to do with it. How would God show up in your life? For Moses, he just showed up through a burning bush out of nowhere. So don't put it past God. He knows how he can get your attention. And today, he's going to get your attention. I don't know how, but he is. Because he is Jehovah Nisi. So in that, he, 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 he's standing there watching his sheep, and this, this bush catches on fire. And he's going, hey, uh, Moses, dude, come here. And by the way, take your, take your shoes off. This place is, this is holy ground. The things you'll do when you figure out how awesome God is. Lay on your face. <clears throat> Have you ever done that? Oh my goodness. So humbling. I like to do this. It means my hands are empty. I'm, I, I have no power. It's all Him. So God says, Joe, Moses, this is what I need. I need you to go over to Egypt, and I need you to talk to that dude, Pharaoh. You know Pharaoh, right? Raised you since you was a little pup, you know? And Moses is like, ain't no way, God, I'm not going there. Ain't happening. I can't do that. And making up all kinds of excuses. You know, I, I stutter when I talk, you know, especially when I get n n nervous, you know, especially like right now, you're God and I'm talking to you and I'm, th 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 you know, it, you know, some of the things that we're going to make excuses. I can't do it, God, because I'm just only young or I'm old, old or I got this hitch in my get along. You know, I got this problem here. You know, my hair's curly or my hair's straight. You know, my teeth are crooked or my teeth are white or my teeth are brown. or my. You know, I, I'm making up excuses of why you're, God's asking you to do something and you're just like, you're putting it all out there. And God says, you know what? You can make all the excuses up in the world. I'm not taking your excuses. I'm asking you to go do something for me. And Moses finally gives up. And he says, okay, I'll do whatever you want. He goes, listen. I'm not going to send you in there by yourself. I'm going to send your brother with you, Aaron. You know, the thing about it is, is though I'm sending power with you too. I'm going to be with you. He's like, well, how is that going to happen? He goes, well, you see that stick you got? Yeah, he goes, throw it on the ground. He throws it on the ground, and all of a sudden the, snake, the, the stick becomes a snake. 
All of a sudden, he's like, it ain't no little, you know, there's a little black snake that's crawling around, you know, this is a big old snake because the staff is probably about this tall. You know, you got to have a good shepherd, have to have a good staff because you got to turn around and get a good reach on his sheep if they're going and getting in trouble. We talked about that before uh, two Sundays ago about being uh, Jehovah, uh, to be a, a good shepherd. He is our shepherd. And, and in that, it turns to a snake and now God's saying, now grab it by the tail. And he grabs it by the tail and turns back into a stick. He goes, that power, that kind of power is going to go with you. He's like, well, if that's going with me, I'm in, let's go. So he goes and he talks to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's like, you know, what, what's up, Moses? Where you been? I, I, you know, I heard all the kind of stuff you started, and then you ran away and left. And, and Moses is like, I'm not here about all that. I'm here to deliver. I'm a messenger today. And I'm here from God, and I'm just going to just put it straight to you. God says he wants his people to be let free. He wants them, you to let them go. And Pharaoh's like, yeah, right. Ain't happening. And in that, Moses says, all right, I'm telling you, God is involved in this, and he's asking you nicely. And Pharaoh just kind of leans down from his throne. He looks out at Moses dead in the face. He says, bring it on. You're going like, that ain't written in the Bible. Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing, just telling the story. So God says, okay, I'm bringing it on. And he brings plagues after plagues after plagues. And he uses the stick to bring the plagues. Frogs and flies and water turns to blood and just all kinds of nasty stuff. And the last one was a death angel came. And any, any door that did not have the blood on the outside of the house, on the, on the doorposts, the firstborn in the house, don't matter, could have been three, four gen generations. The firstborn was killed. And after that one, Pharaoh says, get your people and get out of here. And so over a million people packed up their stuff with Moses and headed out. They were heading out of, out of town. So they got out far enough that they got to the, the, the Red Sea and they look to the left, there's nothing but mountains. And they look to the right, nothing but mountains. And they're just like, well, now what are we supposed to do? And Moses is like, well, let me go talk to God. At that same time, Pharaoh, they woke up the next morning and just looked, was looking around and says, where my slave at? Where my breakfast? Ain't nobody made me no breakfast. Everybody's all upset. Laundry's not done. Breakfast's not made. And they all was like, you know what? We got to get our slave back. So they all pack up their stuff, and they go out there meaning to be business to bring the slaves back. And all the people turn around and see the dust storm coming of all the horses of Pharaoh and, and coming after them, and they're getting all panicking because they're going to end up back in slavery. And they're like, where are we going to do, Moses? Where are we going to go? And, and God says, Moses, see that thing in your hand? He goes, oh, yeah, the stick. Yeah. He says, take the stick and hold it out over the water. He goes, will it turn into a snake? Just hold it out. So Moses holds the stick out over the water, and the water parts in two. There's a wall of water to the right and a wall of water to the left, and all of a sudden, it turns into dry ground. The, and there's like, what in the world? And so millions of people walk across on dry ground looking at the fish in the sides of the water. Going, wow. Could you imagine being a part of something, a move of God, something like that? We can't. We really have never been a part of anything like that. So in our concept of how great God is, God is not that great. Because all this is to us is a story. But to me, I take it it's a literal story. It really happened. And for me, I believe it. And I believe the power of God is that great. So on the story goes on and Moses, they get out of that mess there and the, and the Egyptians come in there and they get killed because the water falls on them and you're just like, woo, they're partying, woo, God's great, awesome, you know. And so they go on and they get traveling, you know, and, 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 and God sends them some food by, you know, every morning there's some bread on the ground. You know, and they go for days and days with the, with the bread and all of a sudden, they, you know, there's like, we're out of water, Moses. We thirsty. Now, could you imagine 
a million, over a million people whining that they're, they're, to their leader, I'm thirsty. I need some water. And all of a sudden, Moses goes back to God. God, the Red Sea is that way, you know, let alone, I don't know how good the Red Sea was to drink out of it. I don't. But we're out here. We've been away, away from that Red Sea, you know, and there's no water around here. What are we going to do about some water, God? He goes, what's that in your hand? He goes, the stick. He goes, the stick. Oh, yeah. He goes, take the stick. There's a rock over there or yonder. Take that stick. Hit the rock, and you'll get some water. It's like, for real? Are you kidding me? Could you imagine God having some conversations with us, having us do some certain, certain things, and we're really looking at God saying, really, God, you, you want me to do that? I'm going to look really stupid doing this. Could you imagine a million people watching this one man go over to a rock and go like this? What is stick? And then all of a sudden, he does what God tells him to do, and water comes out of the rock. So much water that over a million people, can I keep saying a million people? Can we kind of grasp the concept? Because here's the concept. There's only an average of about 42,000 people in Kannapolis area. Do we not look like we got house after house after house after house after house after house? After house? It's not like out in the country, you got a house and drive a half a mile, half a mile there's another house. It's not like that. There's house after house after house after house. A million people. It says that they got their fill of drinking water. There was that much water provided. Wow. Amazing. We can almost say, ooh, that was cool. Really think about some of the stories in the Bible. And we don't know them because we hardly ever, you know, we hardly ever pick up the book. We're so busy in our lives. That's why we don't know God. We don't know his name is Jehovah Nisi. He is our banner. So, Moses pretty much has been able to use the stick instantaneously and every instance of a miracle, something happened. So this has become their banner. A banner is the significance of, of, of saying that it's a sign or a, a, a something that lifts our spirits, encourages us, gives us hope. And everything that gives them hope was that stick. So why is a banner significant? A, ban a banner stands for as a symbol. And a banner stands for to inspire. The symbol is, is something that, that really encourages us, to, that, is, that we see and they can, even can touch. It's something bigger than maybe like a soldier. It's something bigger than life. It symbolizes a cause. It is that cause that motivates people. For some, it could be a football team. The football team, you know, they all, you know, some people are really motivated by football teams. They'll, they even get so motivated, they go out and they put paint on their face and take their shirts off and paint their bodies and stand out there half naked and it's 30, 28 degrees out. Then there's this, this stand of, of inspiring. It inspires. The banner inspires you to do things. For some, what inspires you to do things is your family. For some, they, they hold a picture in their, on their wall at work or in their wallet or on, in their truck or car. It, it inspires them because you know why they're working so hard. They're working day and night to bring in and take care of their family and the funds that it needs to take. That's their, what they're saying. 
Some is a symbol is, is it, it's that fish that they the sticker that they put on their back bumper or the cross that they hangs around their neck or the cross that hangs around their mirror in their car. It's a symbol that stands that inspires them to do right. You see, we all face battles and problems in our lives, troubles, issues. We all need something to give us encouragement to live on. That's why a lot of people commit suicide. It's because they've lost that banner. They've lost that hope. They've lost something to look at to inspire them. They have just absolutely see no reason to live. What is your banner? What is... What is your greatest problem right now that you need a banner? What is your greatest problem in your your greatest battle that you're fighting right now? That you need a symbol that will inspire you, that will help you and fight and move on through life. You see, the story doesn't stop there for Moses. In Exodus 17, another problem occurs in Moses' life. They've been able to use this stick for a lot of things to help them to move through life and to, to bless them. But all of a sudden, they run across a people called the Amalekites. And the Amalekites, for whatever reason, it seemed like they wanted to fight. And it's like, well, what do we do? You know, do we do anything? You know, like, he looked at me cross-eyed. Let's go down there and kick his tail. Have you ever run across somebody like that? You know? He just said he just said hi to me wrong. That happens a lot in high school, doesn't it? <laughs> he got a big old smile out of her. Yeah. As you walk down the hallway, he brushed me wrong. It happens at work too. It was like I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that guy off the roof because he did just said this, you know. So they're in trouble, and here it is. And it's like, well, what are we gonna do? And Moses says, we're gonna go fight him. And we're going to use the stick. And as long as I hold the stick up, we're going to win. But see, the whole men- mentality of what Moses was thinking is just like every other time. It's like us. We are the microwave generation. We're expecting, and a lot of us has fallen away from God because God didn't move like that when we asked him. And Moses was expecting this battle to go in, kick some tail, and it'd be over with shortly. And Moses took his stick and he said, let's go, guys. And down the valley they went, and they started fighting, and Moses was holding up the stick. An hour later, Moses is starting to feel the wear and tear of his arm. He's switching hands, holding the stick up. And everybody's looking up, stick still up! We're gonna and they're, they're whipping the Malachites. They're just beating them up. But all of a sudden, about three, four hours later into the fight, they were expecting it to be over by now. How many of us have been expecting this problem to go away? Well, we've been on our knees praying, and it's been two days, and it should have been gone. I I mean, this is what I think about what's happening in my life. I prayed, and this should have happened. A year later, it's still going on. Moses is getting tired, and all of a sudden, when the, when the stick starts coming down, he's noticing his own people are dying now. They're getting cut down, and so with everything he's got, he's trying to push the stick back up. Now, how many times in your life that your banner is failing you? That thing that you look at, that man, that woman, that job, that car, that, that daddy, that mommy, has failed you. And you got hurt. And other people got hurt. Our focus is so on the stick. And the stick is letting us down. And even the people around them, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, um, um, it, it, his friend, her, and, and his brother, Aaron, they come over beside him, and they're noticing every time the stick goes down, they, people die. we got to help Moses. And they go over there, and one gets on one side of his arm, and the other gets on the other side of his arm, and they hold, hold his arms up. It took all day 
for the three of them to hold that stick up for the Israelites to win the battle. All because the focus was on the stick. We're fighting for so long and looking at the wrong banner in our lives. And expecting victory. God's there because God helped them win because God gave power to the stick. But maybe our focus should not have been on the stick, but on look past the stick into the heavens saying, God, it's not the stick, it's you using the stick. And God, we need help to bring victory to this situation. After the battle, they won. Exodus 17, 15, Moses says, Exodus 17, 15, Moses says this. Moses built an altar there and called it Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. What is your banner? What is it that you keep looking to? And it's not God. You're expecting victory. Over your situation. You're expecting this person or this, 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 this situation to change. What is your stick? Why is it you call on that friend instead of getting on your knees and calling on Jehovah Nisi? For your troubles. It's just a stick. It's just a person. People fail. I don't care, there is not a preacher across this land that is perfect enough to be a substitute of God. If I'm on that pedestal, you better take me down. I'm just like you. I get thoughts in my head, somebody makes me mad, I'm going to do, I'll just stand like my wife, like I said, she says she'll just cut them. I'm not big on cutting, I'm big on shooting. I like to hunt. Preachers are going to screw up. They're going to mess up. I don't care. They got a lot on their shoulders. They themselves put themselves in a place in their mindset that I, if I, I got to do right. If I don't do right, all these people are going to go and mess up. So how much more that we put them as a banner instead of God as a banner? What is your banner? A lot of times we put stuff with priority in our lives. And without walking with God with this stuff in our lives, we find ourselves in a position that is too much. Holding the banner, holding the stick, it's too much. The weight gets too heavy. And even the friends that come around us and try to help push it back up and hold it up, it's hard. God's Word says, Jesus says, take my yoke, it's light. Why are we continually struggling with holding it up ourselves? Oh, I forgot. There's this thing called pride. We are so full of ourselves and so full of pride. We don't want nobody to know that we got issues. We don't want nobody to know that we're not perfect. We don't want nobody to know all the bad stuff about us. That's why social media is so big right now. We get to show the best of the best of the best out of us. Look at this picture. I got this one. I even got Instagram to help me pretty it up even more. I've looked myself at things in my life that I could do it. I can make this happen. 
I can work. I can do this. I can manipulate the situation. I can, I can get into people's minds and, and, and get them to think. But all of it does to me is put pressure on me. And then I finally say, you know what? I've had enough of it. I want to quit. I'm done with this. I'm done with this preaching stuff. Done with this church stuff. Done with these people. Done with this job. I, I just want to quit. Then God shows up, does a little God thing, and says, boy, you ain't quitting. I'm not done with you yet. Of course, I'm going back to my mom. Well, then you got to help me here. I'm praying, you know, but it's like, but still, I'm doing, doing, doing stuff when I should be more in the presence of him. Maybe locking myself in the bathroom just saying, are you in there, Daddy? Yeah, yeah, but my time isn't on the bathroom. My time is on, the, on, my, on my knees. See, our banner is our God. He is our strength. He is our hope. He is our symbol. What banner have you been looking to? What do, you, what do you do when you want to give up? You see, Jehovah Nisi inspires you to never give up. I think of the banner of the greatest banner I ever saw for us was on 9-11. When our country so attacked and was so devastated by the loss of people, and when those firemen put up that American flag on that rubble. And, and, and it was just still, just even the, 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 the mist of smoke and stuff all around the background of it. It inspired me as an American to stand strong and I'm going to stand by my country and I'm going to stand by the president as he makes the decision to go after those that hurt us. That how we should look to God and say, you know what, you God I, are my banner and these people over here hurt me. These people over here mean to bring problems to me. This job is causing problems to me. This, this, my wife or my husband are causing problems. My children are causing problems. Taking all the heaviness and the woes of your life and the issues of your life and going, Here, God, you are my banner. You are my hope. You are God, Jehovah Nisi, that I am looking to to get through life Galatians 6 9 Jehovah Nisi inspires you to never give up so let not let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good at the right time we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit Jehovah Nisi empowers you to victory. Psalm 61 through 4 says there, there's one that we can rally around when we feel that we are at our weakest. Not only will he inspire us, but he will give us the strength to carry on. Jehovah Nisi is the Lord, is our, is my banner. He is my banner. God is John's banner. Put your name there. God is John's banner. What's your name? Put your, God is Jesse's banner. Yeah. God is Nancy's banner. Yeah. What are you looking at today what do you think is your is encouraging to you if it's not God I'm telling you it's going to let you down it's going to let you down and then you're going to get frustrated and then you're going to want to quit life people will always let you down 
God is the only one that stands by his word. Oh, but pastor, I prayed to God and, and for my grandma to be healed or my mom to be healed from cancer. Listen, when you get to heaven, you can look God straight in the face and say, you hurt my feelings, God. You didn't heal my grandma or my mom or so-and-so. And I'm going to tell you what, he's going to look you right in the face and he's going to say, you're right, I didn't. But you got a second? Let me tell you what my purpose was. And all of a sudden, it's going to blow your mind that the wisdom of God saw past the moment of sorrow and hurt and pain that you were in. That there was a bigger purpose to further the kingdom of His Son, Jesus Christ. That that death or that pain or that suffering happened. That's messed up, Pastor. I, I know it. But God is smarter than all of us. He's greater than all of us. Why should I question him? Why? He's holy. He's right thinking. He's our righteousness. He is right thinking. We aren't. Our thinking is so screwed up. Stinking thinking. That's right. Absolutely. Might be my next post on Facebook. Stinking thinking. As you bow your heads. And we get ready to close. I just want to still continue to put the opportunity, watching online or here. For God to be your banner, you got to be born again. To be born again, you need to repent of your sins and, and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you. It says, if you will repent of your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and He was buried and raised from the grave, you believe that, you will be saved. Will be saved. And then at that point, God sends the Holy Spirit and fire to live inside of you. And it will change your life. And then you can make Him your Lord, your banner. And when things get tough, fights happen, bad stuff happen, you can look to Him for victory. To get to the other side. As we pray, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, will you ask Him to save you? And for us followers and believers, let's do a little self-examination. What have we made our banner? And we need to take that banner down and put up the banner of Jesus Christ and make Him our Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to give you praise, honor, and glory. We just thank you for this word. We stand on the words of your, word, of your book, Isaiah, that this word will go forth and it will accomplish the things whereunto it is sent. You will send this word across the, the world, Lord, to bring salvation, to bring the believers closer to you. That even in the battles of such, like Moses had to fight, people died, it proved that you were still the banner that brought us to victory. To name an altar after you. God, help us. Hear the prayers of those who are looking for salvation, God. To save their souls and baptize them with the Holy Spirit and fire. For the rest of us, help us know you more and better. To have a, a more intense relationship with you. That we will be the bride ready to go for when you send your son. We will be the white bride wearing our white garments, ready to go home, ready for Jesus to come and get us. Help us get to that point. Can't do it. You're our banner. We can't do it without you. We hold you up as our banner. We need you. We look to you to get us to that point, to bring the victory to that point in our lives. I bless these people. I bless those who are watching online with your understanding of love, that they will see how much you love them. I bless them with, the, with the, everything that's in them, that people will want it. I bless them financially. I bless them spiritually. I bless them physically. That in that move of blessings, people will want you, see you, desire after you. God, we love you. Thank you for loving us first as we go our separate ways. Move 
in each one's lives this week. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen.